Feeling a little art craft crazy? Hi, I'm Donna from Art Craft Crazy and I'm going to show you how to make cardboard cotton reels that really look like wooden ones. Now the first reel, I'm actually going to show you four different ways that you can make these. This is the first reel and I've covered them in paper. Now the, the card stock that I used is the heavy backing board from the 12 by 12 stacks. I've glued a few together and in this case the card was already thick so I cut out these discs and I cut three per end. So I'll get started and show you how I make them and then put them together. So I have a punch. Now because I'm making four different ones, I've got all the measurements on my website. So the link is below to where to find them on my website. I'll cut out six discs and then I glue them together. Now this is the Tombow Multi Liquid Glue. It's really, really strong. I like using this, but I use it sparingly because I don't want it to smush out outside of the sides so I just use a dot method and I just hold it down with my skewer and I just dot all over. I also keep my glues upside down while I'm using them and that way I don't have to worry about the glue coming down to the tip it's always there. Press them together and I roll it around in my fingers just so that it's even and I do the same on this one. So I've got three pieces together now and that'll give me a nice thick end and I'm going to make this one end of my cotton reel. So just set that to dry. I've already made a couple so this one here is not sandpapered and you can really tell the difference once it's been sandpapered. I've used a coarse sandpaper. It just gets through it a bit quicker. You can use a backwards and forward method or you can just stroke it one way. It really doesn't matter which way you do it. It works either way because the cardboard's not hard. And then just stroke it like this to go all around and clean it up so it's all even. Right, so that's the edges and it makes it look joined. Now I'm going around either side, like say the bottom side, and I'm going to take off the sharp corners. So go all the way around. And I do this on both sides. Turn it around and do the other side. And I'm turning it in my left hand, you'll notice it's probably difficult to see on camera, but I'm actually spinning it in my fingers as I'm sanding. I brush off all the cardboard dust. Now coming around all the way around and just doing that final, it's like petting a dog. Just stroke it all the way around until it, it's all even. Brush off the dust again. And look at the difference between one that's been sanded and one hasn't. Now this is the core of the cotton spool and I'll show you how to make that now. I've made that out of cardboard as well. I'm using the inside of a paper towel. The softer ones are better to use. So this is a, like a cheap version, like a, a the cheapest paper towel you can buy. So this is just a nice soft one. So work out how wide you want it and then just cut that down. You see it's got a memory. It stays, it's already been made round for you. That's why I like using this. Get a round paintbrush or a piece of dowel or something that's that you can use to wrap it around. I'm putting some double-sided tape on it so once I curl this up it'll just hold it into place. And this is just going to be a holding tape, it's not permanent, it's just a holding tape until I can, once I wrap it up and then I hold it down with sticky tape. So I'll put my paintbrush in 
at the beginning of the curler and I start to roll it around. And it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit too small because you can just release it a little bit and it'll expand. Roll it up quite tight. And once you get to the end, take your tape off. It works either way. Always on camera, I have trouble getting this tape off. Every time I do it and I'm not on camera, it comes straight off. So just take the paintbrush out, check, I'm just checking to make sure it's similar size to the first one I made. And see here, if you just let it go slightly, it'll expand in size. I tape it top and bottom and again in the middle, just so that when I cover this, it's, it's all uniform. What you really want, the most important thing is that you keep it cylinder. Because if you bend that cardboard, it'll come out lot, sort of like ridges in it, squares. And if it's not level, I'll just smooth it off. It's easier to put the cylinder onto the sandpaper this way. And just rub it a couple of times and that'll flatten it out. And make sure that you get a really good contact when you go to glue it to the discs. Now I also find because there's nothing inside this cylinder, you've only got that very small area to glue, I like to have something a little more meaty. So I made some filler. So just grab some of the cardboard offcut and I just bent it up into a triangle and push that down into the cylinder. You want a tight fit, not a loose fit. And you don't want it that tight that it pushes the cylinder out of shape either. So just get it just right. Just bend it into three. If it's too loose, it'll fall down. That's a little bit loose, so I, but I use it anyway because I just want to keep going with the video. And then cut a circle. It doesn't have to be neat. You're not going to see this. It's just to hold the glue. Right, so I'll put some glue inside the cylinder now just to hold that triangle in place. And I'm just using an all-purpose clear craft glue. And that's just to save my Tombow Multi liquid glue because it's, it's a really good glue, so I don't want to waste it. This one's a bit more thicker, so it it goes a bit further. So by putting it, don't be too generous or it'll run down inside and just be a total waste. And pop that little plug on top. Now what I did is I just set that up to dry with on some non-stick paper and done the same on the other end. Now if you want to cover your reels with paper. This is how i done it. I just cut out some more paper the same size. You can cut it ever so slightly smaller but you don't need to because I use the sandpaper again to um, distress it. So I use the same method as before. Hold it down with my skewer and this is so I don't get glue all over my fingers. It's a great tip. And just use dots. And using the dots, you use a lot less glue, but it still gives you a really good contact. So put the paper down on both sides of the disc. So you need four pieces of the decorative paper for each end, or two for each end, four in total. Now these circles fit the disc perfectly. Like I said, you can cut them out a bit smaller if you want, but that's a bit fiddly. Especially if you've done them by hand. Using the circle punch makes this a lot quicker. Like I said, I'll put the measurements in my website. Now, if you're going to sandpaper the edges, leave this to dry because the sandpaper will just pull that paper back off while it's wet. 
Now I'm getting ready to cover the spool. I cut a strip. I'm just doing a measurement of how much I need. I show a few methods throughout the whole video of different glues so you don't have to use this same glue all the time and I'm wiping the edges with my finger just that's where I need the most contact on the very edge and just roll that around and set that to dry now once your glue is dry just scrape off the edges. I'm just sort of brushing it off one way and you can see where it's turning white that's distressing the edge. You can leave it like that or you can then come back in and colour it. Do both sides because you can see the underside and the top side of your spool. Smooth it down by just brushing it around the edge. I'm using the Distress Inks. You just find a matching colour. This colour matches the, the crackles. You can see the difference if you left it plain with the white showing or coloured it up. And we're ready to glue the two discs on. I'm sticking with the multi-liquid glue here using the Tombow brand. You don't need much again or it'll all squish out mostly in the center put your cylinder your center down onto your disc it's much easier to center finish gluing that and put your other end on turn it over and like i said it's easier to put your cylinder down onto your disc much easier to center it first style finished now we'll go on to the second reel which is the same as the first reel, only I'm using a plastic for the core and it's a much smaller reel. I've changed out my glue, which is the clear craft glue. I've cut off a plastic cylinder. You can use a, one of those big fat drinking straws or whatever you've got in your multi stash drawer. We've got an alcohol breath tester. I just got one of those little disposable tubes that you breathe into and cut that down. Made the discs the same as I done on the first one, covered it with paper the same as I done on the first one and then glued it all together. Now we're up to the third reel. Now this one's totally different. We're doing a, an embellishment which is only half a reel. These are good to put on your mixed media works. So I've used the plastic cylinder again. And I, when I made my disc, I cut it in half this time. So you only need one disc. Once you've laid them up and glued them together, you only need one. Get your cylinder. Once you've split it, you just split it using it this way is much easier than laying it down and I just use my mat to line up the lines so I knew where my halfway was and then you've got your half I used hot glue for this And I, because I'm working with plastic and I didn't want the hot glue to melt it, I used it on a low setting. Whoop, turn it around. And I've got a non-stick baking paper that I can set this down on and make sure it's level. So a little bit more hot glue. And because I'm on the low setting, it, the glue's not that hot, I can just use my finger to make sure that it flattens out and then push it down on the paper to make sure it's going to sit nice and flat. And then just glue the other end on the same. The difference with this one is that I won't be covering it with paper. You, you could, but you could glue it on. 
but I'm going to paint it. And here it is finished in its unpainted form. And I've just set it on this ATC card to give you an idea of its size. And I'm just using a gesso, which is a primer, to paint on. I had to do a, a light coat first because it's very streaky. Now we'll do the fourth reel. This one is great if you haven't got any cardboard sheets. So it's this one at the top. I've used a cereal box and a marketing or an advertising magazine. So cut out your discs. Of course you need a few more because I want to get the ends of the cotton reel quite thick. So I used about six discs per end. And this time I'm using the glue stick. And this one's called the blue stick. So it goes on blue and dries clear. It's quite sticky, so it's perfect for this because sometimes your cereal boxes are glossy on one side and flat, on you know, a bit rough on the other side, like a chipboard. So this glue is good for that because it grabs a hold of that glossy. Then grab your magazine brochure and cut strips. I ended up using three because it wasn't a very thick magazine. If you use a thicker magazine, you might only use one or two strips. And this is to make the core of the cotton reel. So I start by rolling it up from the folded part of the, the magazine. Roll it up very tight so you've got a little center and just keep rolling it and make sure you've kept it round so just check it every now and again that it's round and even to the edge just use your fingers to straighten it up because at the very start is the way you get it nice and even Now once you get to the end here of this first layer, it creeps, so all the pages are in uneven. So just hold that down with a piece of tape. And we're going to use this piece to put on the next one. So cut another strip, the same width as the first one. So tape that in before you start rolling. It's much easier to roll now, it's a bit bigger. Keep it tight and even. Tape it off again. Check it for size. If you need a bit more, cut another strip. and roll that up, taping it at the beginning. Check that it's flat, both ends. Tape it off to hold that down. Now I like the magazine to do the core here because it's already filled in the center so it's easier to glue and the print actually adds to the look of the finished cotton reel and it looks really good. I use the craft glue, the clear one, to glue this down now because I can put it all through the center of that roll and it helps, it's sort of rough, it's got a rough finish so it helps grab a hold of it and the disc glues on really good. So glue that disc on, turn it over, and do the same on the other end. Get the right amount of glue on there because you don't want to squish it out. Now I'm going to paint it with a gesso. So this is the one that I showed you earlier. It's easier to paint all of this stuff together. So just give it a coat 
depends on whether or not you want how much of the writing you want to show through from the magazine. You know, if, if some of the magazine showed through that you didn't like, you would give it a, you'd let this coat dry and do it again. Now we're ready to colour and I'll start off with the light colours first. I only use the Distress Inks for this, for these cotton reels and this one is old paper. So you can either completely cover it with your light or you can hit and miss. And this one is brushed corduroy. I'm going in lightly because I don't want to sort of have anything too hard and fast to start with. Uh, it's easier to add more. Because if you want to put a bit of string on this or a bit of ribbon, you know, that can add to it as well. I like these little pads because you can, you know, without putting them on the handle, because you can fold them in and get into those creases. You can pad it straight on if you like, if you want to get some, because it's cardboard and it's got some little imperfections in it, you can do this and that sort of picks up a little bit more of the speckles and makes it look a little bit more like wood. And there's that one uh, on a, a mixed media page. I'll go ahead and do the same to this one. Now I want this one to be a bit darker, so I'm going in with the, the corduroy. What is this color? The brushed corduroy. Another way you can do this is you can use some base colors on your reel you could color so much of it and then you could in Photoshop you could go ahead and design a little label and print that out and glue that on so it would be like you know the old style label and what style thread it was you could print something out like that too that would look pretty cool So just keep building up your colours. You'd be surprised at how little amount of colour that you actually need. I'm going to add a darker colour now. This is Walnut Stain. This time I'm going to put it on some non-stick paper first and add a little bit of water and just dab it. I'm going to put some little dabs into the cracks and creases of the, the disc part of the cotton reel. So I've gone all the way around the join and it, and it runs into the join. Do the top and the bottom. And set that up to dry and this is how it looked finished. You can add a little um, darker spot for where the hole normally goes at the top of the reel. Tie some ribbon or some smaller pieces that you've got that you know you need to show off if you want. Here's a bottle of string that I had in my drawer. It was taking up a real lot of room so I took it out of the bottle and I wrapped it around one of my spools. Now, here's how much space it was taking up in the drawer. Look at the difference. And here's some tassels that are on a piece of ribbon. 
they look really lovely on these cotton spools so I hope you get a chance to make some they look really good and no, you wouldn't even know they were made of cardboard let me know what you would use these for if you made some I'd love to see if you made any altered cotton reels or something like that I think they'd be perfect for altered cotton reels I'm Donna from Art Craft Crazy. Thanks for watching and bye for now.